Hello, hello! I am once again in desperate need of a haircut and shave, but no time for that now. You may recall at the end of my previous review I mentioned that I don't actually own a copy of The Webbed Planet. You literally can't buy anywhere in New Zealand anymore. Even the Australian listing got taken down, so I was forced to resort to everybody's favourite YouTube alternative, Daily Motion. Now, I don't know if you've ever had to try and get Daily Motion to play a video on a PS4, but let me tell you, it is an absolute nightmare. Frame stuttering, loading times, endless looping ads, and sometimes when you're lucky enough to get the video to actually play, it'll get halfway through before... It's been a fair while since I've been able to make one of these. Uh, if you just want to skip straight to the review section, just fast forward to this point in the video here. Okay, so, start of December, the laptop I used to make my videos died literally as I was finishing editing my review of The Rescue. Thankfully, December's the only busy time at work, so I could actually afford the $350 repair fee, but then I had a very full work schedule. Fast forward a month and a half, The Rescue and The Romans reviews are all finished, work's winding down, I got a little bit of spare time to myself, and... I have a pretty nasty accident at work involving me falling over a banister and landing face first into a wooden armrest. Oh my friend! My face! <sighs> Nothing major, just a lot of bruises. But I still needed a little while to recover, so I thought, hey, while I've got a rest up, why not jump back in and watch the next Doctor Who story? It was frustrating as all heck to get a hold of the episodes online, but I figured, hey, I really enjoyed the last one so much, it'll be totally worth it, right? Spoiler alert, it wasn't worth it. Bear with me while I try and recount the plot. Upon landing on a new alien world, the Doctor and Vicky are captured by the evil Animus. No, 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 not, not the Assassin's Creed Animus. Uh, let me just consult Wikipedia real quick, it might make this a lot easier. Okay, the Wikipedia synopsis reads, The Doctor speaks with an invisible Animus on Vortis about an invasion by butterfly-like Minoptera to regain their planet from the ant-like... Zabi. Uh, it's just another separated from the TARDIS faction versus faction telepathic mind control story, but without the satisfying explanations. The Web Planet made me realise something about watching old Doctor Who. When viewing classic sci-fi, there's this expectation that you're inevitably going to encounter a lot of cringeworthy elements, whether it be cheesy, corny acting, embarrassing costume designs, or just plain old production jankiness. It is imperative to manage your suspension of disbelief because, you know, this is old. There wasn't the technology or ability to produce the stuff that we're used to seeing today. But in saying that, everything has a limit and I'm pretty sure I reached mine while watching this. Like, I'm used to rough fight choreography, maybe the odd costume malfunction, perhaps a Dalek not moving the way it's supposed to, but in the web planet we get a little bit of everything. A really muddled story, lackluster setups and payoffs, mystical sci-fi nonsense that doesn't make any sense so you're just waiting for an explanation but when the explanation does eventually come it doesn't make any sense either every single time Ooh, how's she being controlled is it the arm is it the bracelet is it telepathy nope it's the arm but not really it's telepathy but not really also it's actually the costumes oh man the costumes are just embarrassing like I assumed that they would just reuse the oversized ants from Planet of Giants for the Zavi, but no, we just get these giant, bulky, unmoving plastic bodies with obvious human legs sticking out. And the Monoptera? I'll admit it's pretty cool how detailed the face paint and wing designs are, and the fact that they made so many costumes just for one serial, but despite admiring that... I just can't get over how goofy the big fluffy bodies look. Like, you can understand why I thought they were bumblebees, right? Couple that with the bizarre hand movements and weird vocal inflections. 
and I just cannot stop myself from laughing every time I see these children's stage play looking mothmen. I think it's pretty safe to say I didn't like this one. I didn't hate it or anything. It's serviceable enough, but they clearly just didn't have the budget or the know-how to pull off these grand ideas that they had. I do try to look past the sloppy elements, but everything just comes across so amateur. And not to mention the traditional bad trappings of previous stories. I hope you like this 80s arcade cabinet sound effect because it's literally all you hear throughout all six episodes. Oh, watch out Vicky, don't want to fall over that clearly unmoving set. Such a thrilling battle, the likes of which we've never seen. Oh look, his wing fell off. Can somebody clean the camera lens please? I can't get a clear shot. Oh, it's supposed to be like that? It looks terrible, you're fired. Uh, let's see, what else? Characters meandering around a desolate environment? Check. An unnecessarily complex bit of TARDIS lore? Check. So, the emergency door opening mechanism for use in a power outage involves removing a little battery-like device from the centre console, inserting it into a wall console, switching on a lamp, then waving several times in front of the light in a weird motion like... What the, what's wrong with just using your TARDIS key, Doctor? Surely you don't need power for that? Oh yeah, I guess this technically counts as another instance of the TARDIS dying. Oh my goodness, the TARDIS is dead. What a monumentous occasion, the likes of which we've never seen and likely to never see again. Except not really, because they don't really explain it, and it's fine by the end of the episode. It j <sighs> what? Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah, that pretty much sums up my reaction too. I oh, don't even get me started on the piss poor ending. Now, unfortunately, unlike previous Doctor Who stories I haven't enjoyed, I wasn't able to just pop into the special features and watch a making of documentary to find some appreciation for it because, as I said, I don't own the DVD. That's not to say that everything was bad though. The continuity was nice. I noticed this subtle detail in the background at the start of the episode where Ian was putting his shoes on because the last time we saw him he was obviously wearing Roman sandals. What's the highest praise you can give the webbed fair? Oh, Ian, put shoes on! <laughs> And, while they're used as really stupid plot devices, it is nice to see Barbara's bracelet and the Doctor's ring referenced. Uh, Victoria has pants now? Something she desperately needed in her first appearance? And there's this nice shared moment between Victoria and Barbara where they discuss medication and education in their respective time periods. Always keen for some creative ideas of technology and society in the future. I think my favourite part was actually when one of the moth people took flight. Like, I was taken so off guard, like, oh, movement! Something's actually happening in this boring episode! And well, that's about it. I never just want to rag on a story with no positives, but honestly, I just wasn't feeling it. There were just too many things that didn't work, and I'm happy to leave this one behind in the don't bother rewatching pile. I'm not in a hurry to add the DVD to my collection either. Sorry if it's one of your favourite episodes. Next up, The Crusade, a four-part story in which two of the parts are missing, so I'll be looking to Loose Cannon Productions for help in that regard again. If all goes according to plan, this review will come out the week in between Dying Light 2 and Horizon Forbidden West, so if you're taking time out of your gaming session to watch this, much appreciated. See you next time.